大家好，欢迎来到第二十届利兹国际钢琴比赛在中国的直播现场。我是利兹比赛的中国代表阮玲婷，同时也是爱满地古典音乐频道的特邀主持人。比赛正在如火如荼的进行中。通过上一期节目，相信大家对利兹比赛的历史以及这届比赛的特殊之处都有所了解了。在直播中看到观众们提出的各种问题，比如在后疫情时代如何举办音乐比赛，评委们如何打分等等。我们再次邀请到利兹国际钢琴比赛的音乐总监 Adam Gatehouse 先生，为大家在线上答疑解惑。Well, this is a very good question, of course, which has been uppermost on everybody's mind. It soon became obvious to us at the end of 2020 and early 2021 that we were going to have to radically change how we do our first round of the competition. Originally, we had planned to visit just three cities: Berlin, Singapore, and New York, and bring everybody there, including the jury. But that became very Soon impossible, and so this year, we've actually visited 17 different cities worldwide, including London, Paris, Berlin, Moscow, Vienna in Europe, and <clears throat> New York and Cleveland in the United States, and of course Beijing, and Tokyo, and、uh, Seoul in East Asia. So, we've had to radically rethink. How we did everything. We were bringing everybody as close as possible to the locations in which they were living or studying, and we, of course, could not travel the jury. So what we did is we filmed in 17 different locations with 17 different camera crews, and we, the jury, watched all those films, 63 of them, online remotely, and we made our judgment in that way. And you know it worked extraordinarily well.、Um, everybody rose to the occasion. All the contestants rose to the occasion, and I think they played wonderfully. So we had, a, a, I think, a very fair first round. Well, the history of the Leeds International Piano Competition in China stretches back quite a long way. The first time we actually had a winner in the finals. Was in 1996, Sa Chen, who's a great friend of the competition, I must say, and was on our jury in 2018.、Um, and increasingly, the number of Chinese pianists who have applied and competed and got very far、um, has increased and increased.、Um, so much so that I would say that in in all the last competitions, we've always had one representative from China among the last five or six. And in 2018, the competition was won by Eric Liu, a Chinaman living in America. So it's a very strong association, made even stronger by the fact that our global ambassador is none other than Lang Lang, and he is wonderful for the competition. He has been extremely supportive, and he sends us some of his wonderful Lang Lang scholars, and they come and they. Perform in other functions, not necessarily in the competition, because they're quite young. But that's a very important connection. Well, that's a very interesting question.、Uh, technique, of course, but technique for me is a given. All 63 competitors who came to the first round had phenomenal techniques. We're looking for something more than just that. We're looking for people who really can communicate. People who have poetry and a soul and a heart, and who dig deep into the inner meaning of the music, not just playing superficial notes, but really look deep into what the soul of that composer is trying to say, and then can communicate it to their audience in a fresh and exciting way. People, in other words, who will make you sit up and listen. People often ask me that: How do you discuss and how do you come to conclusions? Well, 
the short answer to that is we don't discuss at all. There's a very strict rule with the jury for the Leeds, no discussion. We don't discuss any of the competitors at all or any of their performances among ourselves, which is sometimes quite difficult because, you know, particularly if you've heard somebody wonderful, you want to come away and, 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 and talk about it. But we are very, very strict about that. And it does mean that nobody can influence anybody else on the jury. And so it means that we all listen and then we vote and we vote in secret and so nobody knows how the other person is voting. And that, I think, is a way we can be really fair. Well, of course, this is the question that is uppermost in our minds. Of course, the whole performing arts has had a terrible blow in these last 18 months, with many organisations simply not able to uh, perform or, or function at all. And this has had a profound effect on those people who are the artists who perform and who make their daily living from performing to audiences. And it's going to take a, quite a long time for those organisations to recover and also for audiences to gain in confidence. Now, how do I think this is going to affect the younger people? In some ways, I think that there's a fantastic resilience among the young because also they are crucially very technologically savvy, i.e. they know how to use modern te digital technologies in order to get themselves across. So they're streaming, they're doing a lot of online stuff, they know all the platforms. So. Of course, it's really, really difficult for young musicians not to be able to get out and perform to audiences. But I do think that the young generation in particular will really come through this and will have learnt a lot of new lessons on how to communicate, how to get through to the public in general. <laughs>